fluffy pink clouds. How good is that? Anyway, the board of one is convened because today we go home, but first on the agenda is the climb to Selworthy Church. It's a short punchy one and I actually do stand a chance of hitting the top of the leaderboard. Need to do it in two minutes 50 to do that. So fingers crossed. Really sad to be leaving Exmoor as ever. Sad to be seeing, well, sad not to be seeing Scott, Natalie, Bullet, and everybody down here you know, for a period longer, but definitely we'll be back. It's been a sensational few days. The climb to Selworthy Church goes past the picture-perfect thatched roof of Periwinkle Cottage tea rooms. But Earl Grey and scones, scones with raisins and strawberry jam, are the last thing on my mind, because I'm intent on taking a very pretty looking crown. The climb from Holney Colt to Selworthy Church is 0.9 kilometres, average gradient 7.5% with a very steep final section. However, do check out my Chase Race 11 km climb video if you're an aficionado of afternoon tea served in jaw-dropping surroundings with a slice of nostalgia. Anyway, buoyed by my recent good climbs on Porlock Toll Road, Porlock A Road, Exmoor Forest and Hookway Hill, the level of confidence is decent for me. It's never high, but let's say it's fair to middling. But as I hit the shallower lower sections of the climb, the power doesn't come on stream as I'd anticipated. It's nothing disastrous, but it is 10 to 20 watts short of what I reckon I need and the perceived exertion is high. What I now realise is that this was the body starting to say, Phil, time for a little R&R, &R, because there's always a tab to pay for too many good leg stays back to back. And indeed, as you may have seen on the following week's live streams, so it was, because although I had a rest day and backed off a bit, sometimes, well, the bill is a bigger one, requiring a payment instalment programme. So only three minutes 12. I'm not overly happy with that. It's a top nine overall on Strava, um, but only 500 people have attempted the segment. And towards the middle of the course, where you're kind of stepping out from the shallower inclines to the intermediate inclines, that's where I seem to lose most of my speed. So I'm going to slightly adjust my power strategy to deploy um, a little bit more as you get to the middle and a little bit less at the very beginning. At the very end, you absolutely have to mash, and I might try mashing a little bit earlier but definitely not quite able to deploy quite the same power as yesterday or on Leith Hill for whatever reason. Just like that, I transport you back to a beautiful, crisp autumn morning in London. What I just completed, Ed's ultimate pyramid. I filmed it a couple of times before, once indoors, once out, so I'm not going to do it again for the vlog. But basically, it comprised four minutes at 3.85 watts, two minutes recovery, 
three minutes at 335 watts, two minutes recovery, two minutes at 365 watts, two minutes recovery, one minute at 410 watts, two minutes recovery, and then back to three, uh, two minutes at 365 watts, two minutes recovery, I fell a bit short on that one, about 355. Then three minutes, 335 watts, again I fell a bit short, about 320. And then a the final four minutes at 305 watts. I meant to have another second short pyramid on the back of it, but I wasn't feeling great yesterday, very jaded. So I'm going to call it a day today. Well, due to a stacked out work diary, it's taken until quarter to three this afternoon for me to get round to the post-workout carbs following completion of Ed's ultimate pyramid first thing this morning. Very remiss. Anyway, the level of excitement is high because I've got something very special on the deck. Now, those of you who watch Com Hunt TV, do check it out. Shove a twirl in your mouth halfway up. Oh yeah, whisper, I'm a whisper <laughs> man. Can't whisper. Twirl or whisper? Twirl! Twirl. Bloody hell! No, no, not twirl. Yeah. It's got to be Whisper. Well, okay, well, Hank is a twirl man. Hank, he likes to twirl. Um, we'll know that the real power behind the throne down in the West Country is, of course, Natalie. And Natalie's mum has made some rhubarb jam. Vintage, 15th of September, 2020. Keep chilled and use within a month. I'm sure that's not going to be an issue. So, Natalie, here comes the taste test. And look at that. You can see the strands of rhubarb in there. And I'm told it's very hard to make a rhubarb gin. I'm not sure, but there's some kind of science behind that. So we're going to go with a nice, generous serving here. Bear me a second. Don't want to have a spill. I've preloaded the Tesco's rustic French baguette because you've got to have a quality piece of bread to go with a quality jam with the butter. Preloaded it with the butter. So here we go, the taste test. Sorry, there we go. Doesn't that look nice? Mmm. Oh, oh, oh. Natalie's mum. That is heaven. Oh my word. I am so grateful. Thank you ever so much. That is really, really lovely. And in terms of use within a month, I can report that is not going to be a problem. What will be a problem will be the withdrawal symptoms when the pot runs out. Thanks ever so much. of riding outdoors in Exmoor. Um, the data from my Fabero SEO Maduro pedals was telling me that my left right balance is typically 48% left, 52% right. And that compares to something like 49, 51, or even 50, 50 indoors on the Watt Bike Atom. So maybe it's something to do with the seat getting a little bit out of position, that kind of thing. I'm gonna look into that. But nonetheless, I do feel that my left leg is weaker than my right. Therefore, looking to continue to rectify the imbalance with single leg work. Here, the single leg deadlift. So that was with the 20, the 20 kettlebell. Um, felt pretty even on both sides in all honesty. Um, certainly felt better than it has done over the preceding two or three weeks. Uh, need to look into the bike setup. It was a very quick gym session today. 
just uh, four working sets of incline bench press and four working sets of uh, pull up for the upper body and three working sets of the single leg deadlift. I'm gonna have a little bit of zone two, some of which will be the high cadence work, but also gonna look at um, my pedaling technique um, with a more normalized kind of 90 to 100 cadence. Um, this imbalance has coincided obviously with obviously the crash back in May, but also me working very hard to bring up my cadence to high levels. And maybe, you know, that's got something to it. I'm just gonna have a real good look at this on the Watt Bike Hub. But if you see on the data, my RPM is about 109. Watts, upper zone two, lower zone three. Left, right balance, 49 right, 51 left. But also very tellingly, how efficient the pedaling stroke is, i.e. the PES score, the average PES, is down on where it was once. It used to be 68 to 70, but now I'm in the 60s, the low 60s, here 60. And that means there's too much of a dead spot likely at the bottom of the pedaling stroke. You can see the Watt Bike Sausage is not a beautiful green circle. It's kind of flipping between red, amber, green. And the more red it is, the greater the imbalance and or the more the dead spot at the bottom of the stroke, hence the figure of eight or the peanut. So we're gonna drop the cadence now to 95 and see how that impacts on life. Try and keep the watts about the same. Instantly, you can see left, right, 50, 50. That's interesting. And we're spending more time in the amber, less in the red. It's not green, oh, look. The average PES has come up a little bit. Let's see if I can hold 61 or better. 50, 50 sustain. Rarely seeing the peanut. Not spending much time in the green but this is obviously a lot better. So spending a lot more time now in the green, pedaling technique, much more efficient, but feels harder. That's partly because I've got out of practice. Plenty for me to reflect on. Not sure what to conclude yet in terms of what's best. I definitely think higher cadence is easier on Zwift and perceived exertion is easier outdoors as well. But I don't like seeing 48.52 on my left right balance. A conundrum.